Do you know that gravity, one of the most fundamental forces of nature, might not work as we think it does? What if I told you that there is a new experiment that challenges the validity of both Newton's and Einstein's theories of gravity and suggests that there might be something else going on? This experiment involves nothing more than observing pairs of stars that are very far apart from each other using a space telescope that is orbiting the Earth right now. If you are curious about this experiment and its results, then you should definitely watch this video because I'm going to tell you about a new paper that claims to have found smoking gun evidence for a modified gravity theory at low accelerations using data from the Gaia Space Telescope. In this video, I will explain what this paper is about, how it uses wide binary stars to test a modified gravity theory called MOG, what are the main results and findings of the paper, and I will also discuss the possible sources of uncertainty or error. And finally, I will mention the future prospects and directions for further research on this topic. So, stay tuned and keep watching. Gravity is one of the most familiar and yet mysterious phenomena in nature. We all experience gravity every day as it keeps us on the ground and makes objects fall when we drop them. But what is gravity really? How does it work? And how can we describe it mathematically? For centuries, scientists have tried to answer these questions and they have come up with different theories of gravity. The two most famous and widely accepted ones are Newton's universal law of gravitation and Einstein's general relativity. However, even general relativity is not the final word on gravity, as it faces some problems and challenges, especially at very large and very small scales. For example, it is not compatible with quantum mechanics, the theory that describes the behavior of matter and energy at the atomic and subatomic levels. It also cannot account for the observed accelerated expansion of the universe and the apparent discrepancy between the amount of visible matter and the amount of gravitational mass in galaxies and clusters of galaxies. These problems have led some scientists to propose alternative or modified theories of gravity that try to solve or avoid these issues by introducing new concepts or modifying existing ones. One of these alternative theories of gravity is called scalar tensor vector gravity, or MOG for short. This theory was proposed by John W. Moffat the author of the paper that we are discussing in this video in the late 20th century, and it is based on the additional gravitational degrees of freedom, the scalar field G equal Gn, 1 plus alpha, where Gn is Newton's constant, and the massive, spin 1 graviton, vector field, vector field, phi mu. These fields modify the gravitational interaction between masses and make it depend on the physical length scale or averaging scale L of the system. The main idea of Mogus that gravity behaves differently at different scales, and that it can explain the observed phenomena that are usually attributed to dark matter without invoking any exotic or invisible particles. In particular, Mog predicts that gravity is stronger than Newtonian gravity at very large scales, such as galaxies and clusters of galaxies, and that it can account for the flat rotation curves of spiral galaxies, the gravitational lensing of distant objects, and the structure formation of the universe. On the other hand, Mog predicts that gravity is weaker than Newtonian gravity at very small scales, such as the subatomic level, and that it can avoid the singularity problem of general relativity and be compatible with quantum mechanics. But what about the intermediate scales, such as the solar system and the wide binary star systems? How does Mog compare with Newtonian gravity and general relativity at these scales? This is the question that the paper tries to answer by using the data from the Gaia Space Telescope. One of the applications of the Gaia Space Telescope is to study the orbital motions of long period, widely separated binary stars, usually referred to as wide binaries in astronomy and astrophysics. These are pairs of stars that are gravitationally bound to each other, but that have very large separations ranging from 2 to 30,000 astronomical units, where one astronomical unit is the average distance between the Earth and the Sun, which is about 150 million kilometers. These wide binaries have very low accelerations, lower than about 1 nanometer per second squared, which is about a billionth of the acceleration that we feel on Earth due to gravity. 
But why are these wide binaries interesting for testing gravity theories? Well, because they probe the low acceleration regime, where the gravitational anomalies usually attributed to dark matter are observed in the flat rotation curves of spiral galaxies. These anomalies imply that the gravitational force is stronger than expected at low accelerations, and that there might be a modification in the relevant fundamental physics. Such experiments test the degree of generality of these anomalies by exploring the same acceleration regime using independent astronomical systems of vastly smaller mass and size. The paper by Moffat uses the Gaia data to calculate the accelerations experienced by the wide binaries as a function of their separation and mass, and to compare them with the predictions of MOG, Newtonian gravity, and general relativity. It uses a method called Monte Carlo deprojection, which is a statistical technique that allows to infer the three-dimensional motions and distances of the stars from the two-dimensional projections on the sky, taking into account the measurement errors and uncertainties. The paper also takes care of possible sources of noise or bias in the data, such as the presence of undetected stellar components, unbound encounters, and spurious projection effects that could affect the results. It uses spectroscopic information and radial velocities to estimate the masses and the probabilities of the stars being true binaries and to exclude possible contaminants. It also calibrates the occurrence rate of hidden nested inner binaries at a benchmark acceleration and finds that it is very low and that it does not affect the results significantly. The main results and findings of the paper are as follows. The observed accelerations of the wide binaries agree well with the Newton-Einstein prediction for accelerations higher than about 10 nanometer per second squared, which corresponds to separations smaller than about 2,000 astronomical units. This means that at these scales, gravity behaves as expected, and there is no evidence for any deviation or modification. However, the paper also finds that the observed accelerations of the wide binaries deviate from the Newton-Einstein prediction for accelerations lower than about 1 nanometer per second squared, which corresponds to separations larger than about 10,000 astronomical units. This means that at these scales, gravity behaves differently, and there is evidence for a breakdown of standard gravity. They find that the deviation is in the direction of higher accelerations than expected, and that it is about 30 to 40% higher than the Newton-Einstein prediction for accelerations lower than about 0.1 nanometer per second squared, which corresponds to separations larger than about 30,000 astronomical units. This means that the gravitational force is stronger than expected at low accelerations, and that it is consistent with the distance and mass velocity scalings observed in spiral galaxies. They also find that the deviation is very significant meeting the conventional criteria of five sigma for a scientific discovery. In a sample of 20,000 wide binaries within a distance limit of 650 light years, they found that only 0.2% of the wide binaries have accelerations that are lower than the Newton-Einstein prediction, while 99.8% of them have accelerations that are higher than the Newton-Einstein prediction. This means that the deviation is not due to random fluctuations or measurement errors, but to a real physical effect. The paper also explains that the MOG prediction agrees very well with the observed accelerations of the wide binaries, for all the range of separations and masses, and for all the values of the MOG parameters that are consistent with the previous studies of galaxies and clusters of galaxies. This means that MOG can explain the deviation from standard gravity, and that it can provide a unified description of gravity at different scales without invoking dark matter. These results and findings are very important because they challenge our current view of gravity and they suggest that there might be something else going on that we don't fully understand yet. They also open up new possibilities and questions for further research, such as how robust and reliable are these results and how can they be confirmed or refuted by other independent observations or experiments how can MOG be tested and constrained by other astronomical systems such as globular clusters, dwarf galaxies, and galaxy clusters? What are the implications of MOG for the nature and origin of dark energy and the fate of the universe? These are some of the questions that the paper raises and that we will explore in future videos. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new and interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. And if you want to learn more about this topic and other topics related to astronomy, astrophysics, and cosmology, then please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time.